deep snow, sub-zero temperatures, and high-speed cars in the forest. This is Rally Sweden. The second round of the 2012 World Rally Championship is not just a Swedish event, as most of the day one stages take place in Norway. And this cross-border rally could be one of the most hotly contested events in some time, with four previous winners taking on these stages. Citroen drivers Sebastian Loeb and Mikko Hirvonen, the Ford duo of Yari Matti Latvala and Petter Solberg, will all have their sights set on the top step of the podium. I was quite often competitive on, on this surface, uh, but it's always very difficult to beat the specialists like uh, the Finnish drivers on, on the snow. Of course, it would be great to be on the uh, top, uh, top step of the podium, but I think it's, it's a very hard driver lineup on the rally. Uh, there are many drivers who can do well over here. We have done a good test. I think car is really good at the moment, and we really hope I could uh, push and uh, try to be there fighting for the podium places. It's going to be a long, tough rally, yeah. Uh, it would be nice to win, but as a team, it's very important also for the manufacturer's point. So, here we find the balance. And first time properly on, uh, on snow and ice, uh, you have to maybe get a little bit into the rhythm. Things have changed a lot since last year. Now I have a new car and everything. So, you know, I worked a lot on a car, on a test. So it's going to be very interesting to see now in the rally how it really works. But the feeling is very good anyway. So, uh, you know, I think we have a good chance to win it. And don't discount Norway's Mads Osberg in the Ford Fiesta. He recorded his best ever WRC finish here last year with a second position. And this should be a straight fight with no road order tactics as Rally Sweden sees the introduction of the qualifying stage. This is a timed run over the shakedown test. The fastest drivers then get to choose their place in the road order. And this is where we are in the world. The city of Karlstad is the home to rally Sweden with the stages situated to the north of here, including those four that stretch across the country's western border into Norway. There are 24 stages in total, measuring just under 350 kilometers. And this is how the standings look after round one. Reigning world champion Sebastian Loeb leads the drivers' championship after taking a maximum 28 points away from Monte Carlo. Danny Sordo is second on 18 points. Petter Solberg is third on 15. In the Manufacturers' Championship, Citroen arrive in Sweden with an 11-point lead over Mini. They are currently followed by the three Ford teams. Those drivers standings determined the start order for the inaugural qualifying session that was run over the four-kilometer shakedown stage on Thursday, and this innovation was warmly received by the drivers. The drivers wanted, wanted it to be, so we do a qualification, and if you can play any tactics over, over there, that's the place to do it, and then when the rally starts, everybody is just going flat out three days, and, and that's it. Yeah, I'm happy with that, because uh, if it was no qualifying, I would be sure to be first on the road tomorrow and that's maybe not the best position to be. So now uh, everybody starts the, the rally with the same chances because you have to, to fight for your position and then you just try to choose the best one and, and to continue to fight. So it's, uh, it's a bit more fair, I think. So with much to gain and a lot to lose, the stakes were high and it looked like the pressure had got to Thierry Neuville. Mikko Hirvonen was quickest out the blocks. He posted a time 0.6 of a second faster than Loeb, but they would all be beaten by Yari Matti Latvala. So Yari Matti got the chance to choose his position first at the opening ceremony on Thursday night. Yari Matti, what, what have you chosen? I have chosen 170. We decided to take uh, position 17. The idea behind it is that to try to get the, um, the roads be cleaner in the morning. We were afraid to going in the front that it's, there is uh, snow on the top of the surface. So we believe when it's be clearing, it will bring up a little bit gravel, gravel on the top and giving a more grip. So that's why we want to start far back. Thousands turned out in the sub-zero temperatures to see the WRC's finest tackle the first stage on Thursday evening. The 1.9-kilometre Karlstad Super Special. 
If the local fans were hoping for another fastest time by a Scandinavian, they would be disappointed. Spaniard Danny Sordo claimed top honours in stage one to take the early lead. Rally Sweden back underway then, and with that crucial road order for the following morning decided, let's take a look at how the drivers would line up. Brazil's Paulo Nobre will lead the WRC cars away, followed by Belgian youngster Thierry Neuville. Penny Solberg is the first regular name, he starts 10th. But those with the first choice in the draw all choose positions lower in the order to take advantage of those cleaner lines. Petter Solberg would start 15th with Yari Mati Latvala 17th, followed by the Citroen drivers Hirvonen and Loeb with Mads Osberg in 20th. So on to a Friday morning and the new look route of this classic winter event begins with the 27 kilometer Mitandas 4 stage. It starts in Sweden but soon passes across the border into Norway, right past Petter Solberg's family home. His wife Penilla and son Oliver are preparing a warm welcome. They'll have quite a wait though, there are 20 World Rally cars competing and on this first event using the new qualifying system, Brazilian Paulo Nobre in the Mini has drawn the short straw. He's into action first and facing the loosest snow. Oh, but it looks like Nobre is already in trouble. That's clearly a very sick looking Mini and unfortunately he's out just a few kilometers into the first forest stage. One Mini which is definitely still moving though is that of Danny Sordo. Fresh from his impressive second place finish in Monte Carlo, his confidence will be high. Although a restructuring within the Mini project has effectively left the Spaniard driving for a private team. For now though, he's focused on staying ahead of the chasing pack. Oit Tanak has already impressed in his first two outings in a World Rally car. The Sony Nunster is clearly a star in the making, but he's looking a bit ragged here. And again, and this time he's off the road. A really frustrating setback so early in the rally for the go-fast team driver. And a classic example of what can go wrong if you get sucked into those snowbanks. Back on the start line, it's the moment the Petter Solberg fans have been waiting for. Their hero is back on the Swedish snow and a full works team for the first time since 2008. The 380 studs on each Michelin X ice north tyre biting into the ice and the fourth man is off into Meet Anders Force. Petter is flying and he should know these roads better than most as he's rapidly closing on his home. Terrific support as ever, especially from Penilla. And he's clearly taking to this Ford Fiesta with impressive speed. Petter has smashed Sordo's time, an incredible run for the Norwegian. Fantastic stage, you know, fantastic. And uh, yeah, I think they will beat me behind, so uh, it gets a much cleaner road all the time. But I'm very happy with my stage. A lot of people out there, so hello to everybody on the farm, you know. Very nice. Uh, very nice when I came down there. Fantastic. Yari Mati Latvala selected the 17th spot on the start list after pre-event qualifying. So we'll soon find out if Ford have got those tactics right. As Petter mentioned, the grip has definitely been improving with every passing car. But with Hirvan and Loeb and Osberg still to come, will it be enough? Latvala is on full attack and he is quicker than Petter. in fine form but his time could still be under threat from this man between Latvala and his compatriot Mikko Hirvonen they've won every rally Sweden for three years running teammates for the last four years in 2012 they are very much rivals and Hirvonen is incredibly quick it's not quite enough though he's eight tenths of a second slower than Latvala Further back in the stage, Sebastian Loeb has had a frustrating start to the morning. A last-minute decision to take two spare tyres in service has resulted in a 10-second penalty after checking out late. The eight-time world champion is not quite a match for Latvala and Hirvonen, but write this man off at your peril. Sebastian, obviously a three-minute gap there. Late out of service, what was that all about? Uh, we took a uh, little bit too much time to, to change something on the car, and uh, so we had this 10-second penalty. 
Mats Osberg famously finished second in Sweden last season and played some interesting tactics during qualifying to ensure he starts behind the leading runners. The Norwegians absolutely flying and looking at Latvala's time, there's not much in this. In fact, there's absolutely nothing in it. Osberg sets an identical time and that's enough for the Ford man to take the lead. It was a good stage for us. I uh, took it very steady on the stage many places, but I think that's... Uh, what pays out really, it was, uh, it was a clean stage for me, not a big push, but just very confident through the whole stage and it was good. Osberg is flying again then in Sweden, Latvala second with Hirvonen and Petter Solberg still right in the mix. Loeb currently lies in sixth place after that time penalty. Stages three, four and five may be in Norway, but Mads Osberg is gaining no home advantage. He's had a limited testing program and is struggling to maintain his early pace. Fellow Ford driver Yadimati Latvala takes little time to capitalise. The 26-year-old won his first ever rally here in 2008 and is a proven force on ice and snow. With another strong time in the 20 kilometres of stage three, the Finn moves past Osberg to take over the top spot. Latvala, Petter Solberg has moved ahead of his struggling compatriot Osberg. He's just four seconds off the lead after stage three. Here in the Kirkener test, the former world champion is hunting down the new leader. Oh, but he's got that corner all wrong. Well, proof if needed how much more challenging these tight, bumpy roads are. Petter just getting his line slightly wrong there, and that's a really frustrating setback. Petter, the first of the front runners to slip up then, but two times Sweden winner Mikko Hirvonen is excelling in the DS3. The Finn sets the fastest time in stage four, moving up to second following Solberg's slip up, and with his former teammate Latvala faltering with a lack of balance in his Fiesta, on stage five, the Citroen man has a chance to move into the lead. <laughs> It's the flying finish. Yep, he's done it. Hirvonen, the new leader. Great stage time in there. You're getting the confidence now. Yeah, a little bit. I have to just stop messing around and really gas it and, you know, just attack, so then it works. So, Latvala's hold on the top spot was a brief one. Hirvonen now leads the way with Osberg slipping to third. Sebastian Loeb has begun to recover from his time penalty with a stage win under his belt. He's just 2.4 seconds away from the podium positions. The crews are now arriving at the remote service stop in Kongsvinger. You'll hear all the reactions from there after this break. Welcome back to day one of Rally Sweden. But in fact, we're across the border in Norway where Finnish drivers Mikko Hirvonen and Jari Mattilatvala top the leaderboard as the crews arrive at the remote service in Kongsvinger. Are you a bit surprised that Mikko's pretty quick and he's leading the rally and first time in his Citroen? Uh, I was expecting that. I was expecting. He knew how our car had to be set up for the, for the, for the snow conditions. So, of course, he took that information to Citroen and uh, did it there. So, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. It. I was expecting that. Yari Matti said he wasn't surprised that you were leading the rally. Are you a bit surprised then? I know after the test and after the rally I did, the car is very, very good and, and it's, it's going to be fast. But So, yeah, I knew we have a chance to fight for it, but uh, I don't know, maybe a little bit surprised. So, back out to the forest for the afternoon loop. Conditions still fine, but there's a lot of gravel showing through the snow after the first pass. Finding the correct line will be vital in these repeated stages. 
It's been a difficult day for Swedish touring car driver Richard Gorenson, back for another foray into the forests. He very nearly ended up in the trees earlier in the day. He's made it back out to the stages this afternoon. The mini driver again relishing his opportunity to attack the roads of his homeland. But he's off again. And this time stuck fast in a snowbank. And he's going no further. Russ's Evgeny Novikov has always been a man to watch. Left one, 80 long to break. Right one, half negative, up. He's well known for pushing to the absolute limit of this year in Sweden. It's no different. That Fiesta all out of shape as well. Back up at the front and after losing the lead to his former Ford teammate, Jerry Matti Latvala is pushing as hard as he can to reel in Mikko Hirvonen in the Citroen ahead of him. You can see how rutted the road is looking, but Yari certainly looks more comfortable in the car this afternoon. What a battle we have on our hands. Neither driver wants to lose face here in Sweden, and Mikko is doing everything in his power to keep that Citroen ahead of his former teammates. But again, you can see the gravel starting to show through on the stage. That could be costing the Finn some time, which isn't helpful in such a close fight. Yeah, it is very close. Very close fight. And uh, feels like the car is now, it's, we have a lot more gravel, and it feels like it's understeering a lot. So took it a little bit easy and steady, but uh, you know, it's, it's not too bad. Not too bad. There is one corner in stage seven that's beginning to catch some out. A really lucky escape here for Danny Sordo as he just about manages to power the John Cooper works back through the snowbank. We've already seen it's been a lively day for Oit Tanak and he too coming close to disaster at the same corner. It hasn't been the best of starts for Sebastian Loeb in Sweden after that time penalty this morning. He's approaching the same corner, so needs to watch out, but Loeb too is off the road, a rare mistake from the world champion. Uh, and he is stuck fast. Well, done. well, Sebastian does eventually get going, thanks to the help of the nearby fans, but it has cost a lot of time, and that is a disaster for the world champion. It's also not really helped Mads Osberg, who's now caught in Loeb's snow trail. Well, this is rapidly becoming a rally to forget for the Monte Carlo winner. I lost the rear in the left, so the car went too much sideways. I couldn't throw it back in the right direction for the, the right-hand corner behind, so I went in the, in the snowbank and we were stuck on that. It's still extremely tight at the top of the leaderboard and confirmation that there is no sign of Loeb in the top six. He's now down in 11th. Moving on to the final pair of forest stages on day one, and it's been a frustrating day so far for talented Finn Yali Ketamar. Already running down in 13th place, his afternoon was about to get even worse. Yari off the road and out of the running. The conditions and high level of competition continue to catch out some of the world's finest drivers then. We've already seen Danny Sordo have a brush with disaster earlier, but he is still in fifth place. Oh, but a big slide for him as well. He won't be there much longer. Sordo off into the snowbank. The Spaniard clearly struggling and the drama just keeps on coming on these Norwegian roads of day one. Quickly out to check the front of the car, but something seriously wrong, and Danny will go no further on day one. The temperature become really up, and uh, we thought it was the, the snow in the front of, of, the, of the radiator, and he didn't have this, was the one of the belts for the cooling 
was gone and uh, the car is so hot and we stop. Petter Solberg is still getting huge support on these Norwegian stages. And with Mad Sosberg struggling through brake problems, the fastest time in Torsby sees Petter pass his compatriot to claim third. Another Solberg attack is on the cards tomorrow. Yuri Matti Lavala, meanwhile, is still thriving after those earlier setup tweaks. The big talking point on this first afternoon, though, is all about tyres, with more and more gravel appearing for the later runners. The studs are literally being ripped from the Michelin's rubber. Lavala, though, is still on the attack and charges back into the top spot as he passes the stranded mini of Sordo on the left there. And the Swedish stage is beginning to look like a scrap metal yard. There's Ketamars Fiesta too. So, Latvala's charge has relegated Hirvonen back into second. Like his compatriot, Miko is really struggling for grip. But for some reason, it's affecting the Citroen man even more. By the end of stage nine, he loses 15 seconds to the new leader. Hirvonen, understandably, a frustrated man. Just the tyres are completely finished, so... After a second pass through the Karlstad Super Special, this is how things stand. Hivnen's late problem sees him lie 16.8 seconds behind Latvala, while Petter Solberg is up to third at the expense of Mads Osberg. Sebastian Loeb ends the opening day in seventh. Oh, well, it, it looks quite good now. It was very close before the before the the end of the before the Dorspi, the Dorspi stage uh, for sure. Mikko and uh, will be pushing hard. Better is not so f uh, far either. So I need to keep going as I have done today. There is no no time to relax. Did it have any traction anymore from from the tires? So I just lost lost a lot of time because of that. Definitely, I'm not gonna save the tires. I mean, we have to look look to the data with, uh, with the engineers and see if we can find some help some help from the setup to help, help me save the tires but I don't know I just have to go flat out and, and hope, for the, hope for the best so it's for Jari Matti Latvala who is on top in the battle of the flying fins at the end of day one day two highlights coming up after the break Welcome back to Rally Sweden, where Yari Matti Latvala will start the second day as leader. The crews will tackle some of Sweden's classic stages today, none more so than the legendary Vargosen, the site for one of the WRC's most iconic arenas, Collins Crest, named after Scottish rally royalty, Colin McRae. Currently running in sixth position is Norwegian veteran Henning Solberg. The Go Fast team driver is currently holding eight-time world champion Sebastian Loeb at bay, but he will no doubt begin to feel the pressure sooner rather than later. Henning knows a thing or two about winter rallying, though, and will not give up on his position without a fight. Russian youngster Evgeny Novikov has made a career of driving up to and over the limit. With one of the most experienced co-drivers in the sport alongside him, though the M Sport driver has come somewhat recently, will Denny Girade be able to rein Evgeny in over Collins Crest? Yep, a fairly reserved effort. Novikov and Girade remain in a comfortable fifth. The four Scandinavians leading the field will take some catching, though. Mats Osberg led briefly on day one, but has gradually drifted away from the fight at the front since. Angered by a pre-stage puncture, it's an aggressive display from the Norwegian here. And that angry drive from Osberg will apply a bit of pressure on the leading Norwegian, Petter Solberg, who started the stage just under 14 seconds ahead. The constant grip changes in Vargosen are affecting a number of drivers' all-important rhythm, and worryingly, Petter seems to be suffering more than most. He's almost five seconds slower than Osberg. He's in control over the crest, though. With Latvala focused and ready on the start line, the Battle of the Finns is about to resume. Here we go then, former teammates Latvala and Hievenen are both desperate for this victory. They are the best in the world on these roads on current form and neither is willing to give an inch. Fourth man, Latvala, like his compatriot, is right on the edge. 
and he's closing on the split time after 6.28 kilometers. We'll soon find out who's made the best start. Oh, he's slower. Round one to Miko, but can Yari fight back? After losing time to Latvala late in day one, Hirvonen has almost 17 seconds to make up, and the two-time Sweden winner is on the attack. Let's watch his reception at Collins Crest. I'm sure there's a few Finns out there in the forest. The spectators are loving this battle, and well, they might. Miko and co-driver Yamo Leitinen keep the hammer down through the final few bends. Stage cleared, but does he think it's been enough? I tried to push really hard, but obviously, uh, you know, he gets even more splits and definitely he's fighting back, but I'll try. I'll really re try to keep pressure on him and, uh, you know, go as fast as I can. Well, Miko not sounding too confident there. Maybe lost some momentum. Back with Latvala. Nice tidy leap over Collins Crest. The stage opens out a lot more over the last few sectors. It may suit Yari's natural driving style more. The Fiesta being thrown through the final few bends into the flying finish. He may actually beat Miko here. Yes, an impressive fight back from Latvala, and he takes the first stage win of day two. It looked like in the beginning of the stage, Miko was already two seconds ahead of me, so slightly stressed on that moment. But it's a part of the stage I had never driven very well on that first 10 kilometers, very twisty. It's always going very bad for me but after that I find a good rhythm on the on the fast wider road. So first blood to Latvala early on day two and confirmation there that Osberg has closed up on Solberg. There are still two more stages to come on this morning loop. It's been an eventful weekend so far for Roy Tanak. He's been getting well acquainted with the Swedish snowbanks. This is a learning year for Oit in the WRC car, of course. Oh no, but this is becoming a familiar sensation for the Estonian. The Fiesta well and truly beached once again. Sebastian Loeb suffered a similar incident yesterday, but the world champion has been powering his way back up the leaderboard. It's been an impressive response so far. Pushing really hard again here. Or oh, perhaps too hard. A spin for the Citroen driver. If you needed proof that Seb is on it, there it is. A quick recovery, but more time lost for the Frenchman. Back to the battle at the front, and Mikko Hirvonen is the man leading the charge for the Citroen team. You can see here why these roads are some of the quickest on the calendar. Miko looking incredibly committed through this spectacular sequence of crests. It's not just about who's quickest, increasingly it's about who wants it the most. But I, I really love it. Really good. Have a, you know, nice to have a good fight and, and be able to go fight with, with new cars as well. So I'm very pleased even for this. But for sure I want to, you know, try to take some time out of him and put some pressure on him. So... Uh, it's good, it's good. Joining our rally leader now, and just look at these stunning shots from our heli cam alongside the lake in Fredericksburg. Yari is running behind Miko on the road today, but he can't afford to ease off. He's leading the charge for Ford, and like Miko, is desperate to outpace his former teammate. Yari perhaps not looking quite as tidy as the Citroen driver. As he comes towards the end of the stage, keep an eye on that clock. And he is slower than Miko by 1.9 seconds. His advantage trimmed to just 18. Latvala pulled out another six tenths of a second on Hirvonen in the Hag 4 sprint stage that finished the morning. And Peter Solberg edged slightly further away from Osberg. Further back, that spin means Loeb is still stuck in seventh behind Henning Solberg. The crews are now back at the service park at Hagforce Airport. That means some respite for the two men fighting for victory. Now, you've been teammates with Miko for a long time. I mean, have you thought about what's going on inside his head? A bit of psychological warfare? It is uh, it's a little bit of a mental game between the stages. Uh, we talk, but it's, it's more serious than earlier when we were teammates. So you don't talk, talk about the, the setup changes anymore. I'll, I'll really try to stitch him up on uh, between the stages but uh, but you know he's getting older and more experienced as well so it's not so easy anymore
Because you know Ford inside and out. I mean, really, you must have an edge. Uh, well, let's see. I'll try to do something. But like I said, you know, they are. He's been very consistent in the last, uh, especially end of last year. So uh, it's not so easy anymore to to make him nervous. We know you were very disappointed at the end of yesterday with the amount of stud loss. I mean, is that going to be a factor? We'll see. I mean, for sure, uh, we we try to do something about it, and uh, maybe I have to try to save the tyres a bit more as well. And uh, but it's going to be tricky to find the balance, how much you can push, because you easily start to lose time with that one as well. So uh, it's going to be tricky. So worries about the tyres again on the repeated stages. The main worry being those tungsten tip studs being ripped out when the gravel starts to show through the ice and snow. Only one tyre choice is available to all the drivers. That means one tread pattern, one compound, and that's supplied by Michelin. A rally tyre is a fairly complex product uh, because you're looking to achieve in one tyre, one compound, all the aspects, snow, ice, raw gravel, and a tyre that's going to have to perform in all those conditions. If you look at last year, and this is the same time that we had last year, last year we've got lots of snow uh, and, and probably even uh, a certain depth of snow last year that we don't have. This is now going to have to work like it did last year, but also this year a lot less snow. So that really means that the driving style of the drivers is going to have to adapt itself to the conditions they're finding out there. Uh, and really it's going to be quite tricky. So this tyre has been developed to cope with a multitude of conditions and as you've seen there is a lot of stress on the studs with the amount of gravel showing through. So the onus is on the crews to manage their tyres in and out of the car. We lift the car up, we, we look all the tyres, we compare what is, uh, what is the tyre, we're like how many studs you have uh, lost and you, you have uh, one or two spares. You change the tyre, which normally is um, is uh, worn most, and um, then what you do is you keep rotating them. You change them all the time because what happens is uh, that if, when the tyre cools down a little bit, it, it comes uh, again a little bit more solid with the studs. So that's why you have to just keep changing them all the time. The fans are always a feature of Rally Sweden. They travel from all over the Scandinavian countries to line the forest stages with their fellow WRC supporters and take in the rally atmosphere. It's at the famous Collins Crest jump in Vargosen that each year thousands of fans flock to celebrate the WRC. <laughs> Very icy. Icy. So the fans ready and waiting for the cars to arrive at the infamous Collins Crest Arena. But one driver who's struggling to make it to them is Portugal's Arminda Arrojo. Seven minutes laid out of service. After changing his exhaust manifold, it's cost the mini driver dear. Further down the stage, another mini driver is fast approaching, and the fans will certainly be looking forward to seeing this man, local hero Patrick Sandell. <laughs> And he's going to catch a Rojo's car. Well, the Portuguese driver being very sportsmanlike, driving his car off the road to allow Sandel past. The Swedish star's eighth position is safe for now. I, I really like this stage, second time through. Much better rhythm all the time, but I lost maybe five seconds because Arminda was parked in the middle of the road after he went off. But when he, I came, he went down in the ditch again, so I, thank you for that. <laughs> Peter Solberg is still embroiled in his battle with Mads Osberg, and the Ford Works driver is determined to take that podium position as he continues to push. Oh, kept his foot hard to the floor there to power out of that slide. Spectacular stuff from Petter over Collins Crest too, but once again, he's slower than Osberg. Up at the front, Citroen's Mikko Hirvonen is also on the absolute limit. He flies over Collins Crest one more time. Stage cleared for Mikko. Yeah, I need to send regards to Cedric, my engineer. Car was absolutely perfect, so uh, worked really well. And I tried to be sensible with the tyres as well, so Yari Mati might win me a little bit on this one, but let's see overall how it's gonna go well Mikko will have to wait because Latvala is still in the stage and still has to negotiate Collins Crest and as Mikko suggested Latvala is slightly quicker 
Local star PG Anderson in his Super 2000 Proton Citria Neo has been having a dream weekend so far in Sweden. He leads the SWRC class. Not so much luck for his teammate Alistair McRae. He restarted today under the rally two rules after a string of problems on day one. And that gave him a chance to pay his respects to brother Colin passing over the crest that bears his name. Into the final stages of the day and the fight for top honours for the latest Rally Sweden victory. As expected, tyre conservation strategies play a big part in the second loop, with Lavala not too concerned about the necessity of sharp studs later in the day. He goes for it in the penultimate forest stage, beating Hirvonen by an impressive five seconds. The Citroen man has been protecting his tyres throughout the afternoon and as a result has lost time to Yari Matti. In the final proper stage of the day, Miko does claw back 2.6 seconds by setting the fastest time, but overall the tactics have had little impact. Mads Osberg's valiant pursuit of Solberg has continued in the darkness of stage 17. Despite his Fiesta switching to launch mode mid-stage briefly, he again closed up on his compatriot. While the champion Sebastian Loeb has finally made some progress in stage 16 when he overhauled Henning Solberg to claim sixth, but his luck doesn't last long again. After hitting a rock, a puncture towards the end of the final forest stage in the dusk costs him another 14 seconds. Latvala increased his lead to a level 23 seconds on the short Hagfor sprint stage that ended the day. Petter Solberg's advantage over Osberg stands at 11.1 seconds, but is the leader's advantage enough to hold on for the win? Now, of course, Mikko wants to win, and he's going to attack in the morning to see what is my my pace. And uh, so I, I can't I can't start to back off. I, ha I really need to keep going as I have done today. And what about the championship, though? If you're really fighting for victory tomorrow, you've also got to think longer term for the rest of the year, though. You don't want to roll the car up into a ball, do you? No, no, it's, you really need to think about the championship. It's, but uh, if I can carry on like I have done today, then it should be, hopefully, hopefully it would be enough. And I have a little bit now more margin than yesterday, yesterday evening, so um, gives a little bit more, more confidence for tomorrow. But... For sure, I need to be really wake up from the first day on. It's been another dramatic day in the Swedish forest, but there's more to come. The final day of Rally Sweden is coming up after the break. Welcome back to Rally Sweden, where Yari Matti Latvala leads going into the final day. With blue skies over the frozen forest, conditions are perfect for the world's finest rally drivers. And waiting at the start line, the legend that is Sebastian Loeb. The Monte Carlo winner is away into Leisure Force. He's suffered miserable luck so far in Sweden. But he will have one eye on the fifth place of Evgeny Novikov ahead of him. The Russian youngster, though, has produced one of his finest performances in the WRC this weekend. And with a gap of more than 44 seconds over Loeb, the M Sport 4 driver will be confident of holding him off, especially after he goes four seconds quicker than the world champion in stage 19. Mads Osberg grew up idolizing the 2003 world champion Petter Solberg. And he is now chasing him down for the final podium place. It would be an incredible achievement to catch his fellow Ford driver. Mads giving it everything here. This is rapidly becoming the battle to watch on this final day. Osberg has done all he can. He's thrown down the gauntlet to Solberg. It's all up to Petter and co-driver Chris Patterson now with his 24-year-old rival starting just over 11 seconds behind him. Petter needs to attack from the off this morning. The fourth Fiesta RS being manhandled through the stage, but Petter is slower again, and the gap between third and fourth is now less than 10 seconds. 
As the battle for the final podium place intensifies, time now to find out if second place Mikko Hirvonen can make any inroads to the rally leader. The gap between first and second was 23 seconds coming into this final morning. All the Citroen man can do is push as hard as he dares through Le Joffors and hope he can maintain the pressure on his former teammates. Mikko is through stage 19. Let's have a word with the Finn down at the stop control. I was not not confident at all and had a couple of big slides and it was very slippy on another road so uh, I took it steady. I didn't want to make a mistake when I didn't have a good feeling so uh, unfortunately it went now this way but uh, I, I couldn't push. I didn't want to risk it all. Mikko has done all he can then. Back in the stage it's now down to the rally leader to respond to the challenge. Just the last few corners of stage 19 to come and this is looking good for Latvala. It's looking really good, 7.6 seconds quicker, and that's another big step towards his second Sweden victory. Latvala's lead up to more than half a minute then, with Hirvonen seeming to concede defeat already. The battle for third continues to build, however. Mikko in second place is beginning to run out of time if he's to win this battle of psychological warfare with his former teammates. He needs to push hard and pile on the pressure. But Hirvonen looks to be taking no risks out there. Well, Mikko does seem to be accepting defeat, and this is the man he's conceding it to. Matty Latvala looking for another clean run through. So far, so good in here. Let's keep an eye on the clock. 4.7 seconds quicker this time, and that confirms Hivenen's bid is looking increasingly bleak. There is, however, a battle raging behind. Mads Osberg has got off to a flyer this morning, closing in on Petter Solberg to take back that third place from his fellow Norwegian. He set up problems of plague Mads earlier in the weekend, but he does look quick through these bumpy final day stages. <laughs> Here comes Petter. He needs to dig deep now. There is a lot at stake. He'll not want to be beaten by the younger Norwegian driver and a customer Ford Fiesta. He's clearly trying hard and is fast approaching the finish line. Double Titans. But he is slower again, and that's also a stage win for Mads. With Yari Matti Latvala extending his lead at the top, surely he can now cruise to victory this afternoon over Mikko Hevenen. But just look at the battle between Osberg and Solberg for third place, separated by just 4.9 seconds. And our leading contenders are now back at service in Hagforce. Well, Matt's just 4.9 seconds behind Petter Solberg. Can you do it? Get that podium finish. Yeah, of course. It's. Uh, I mean, it was 11 seconds this morning, and now it's. It's uh, just. Uh, yeah, just over four seconds. So, I think it's definitely possible. Uh, we will push as hard as we can, and uh, I will take. Uh, just do the same speed as I've done now. I can to. I can do a bit more uh, risks on the on the high speed. Do you think you can hold Mats behind you? It's just 4.9 seconds. Well, it will be hard for sure. You know, he has taken me on every stage this morning and he took everybody now with uh, two seconds on the last stage. So, we really have to push on, I tell you. Really hard. Back out for the afternoon loop and with the stages already fairly rough in the first pass, there is real concern this afternoon about the condition of the roads. We just heard from them, so we know how much third place would mean to Mads Osberg and this man, Petter Solberg. Petter, you think it everything? All of that was a big impact. I think he's picked up a puncture immediately. Look how hard he's having to fight the wheel. You can hear it more than see it, but it's a right front flat. He's dropped 30 seconds and concedes third place to Osberg. Pedro, obviously we saw the splits getting slower and slower. We can see what's happened. Did you clip anything? It's just a lot of rocks out there and, and that's it. Touched one and then that's it. So, ah, very disappointed. Well, that's a real shame. The closest battle on the leaderboard has seemingly been decided by a rock on the road. Rally leader Latvala seems to have this result under control. Oh, but I 
think he's hit a rock as well. This has suddenly turned into a nightmare stage for Ford. Yeah, like Petter, it is a right front puncture. Hopefully, Gary Matty's built up a healthy lead. More than 27 seconds are slashed from his advantage. There's a rock I've never ever seen on this stage. It just had come to the to the ruts on the big wide road. I never ever seen this rock, and uh, I just felt it when it hit it, and uh, that's that's the way it is. So now I need to push in Raman. It's all very close again now. Yeah, it's close again, man. So, but let's see. Uh, should be should be quite okay still. A dramatic final afternoon. Latvala will get that wheel changed. He now holds a lead of just over eight seconds as we move into the second pass through Raman. After hunting down Petter Solberg for the last day and a half, third place has now been handed on a plate to Mads Osberg. Lots of Norwegian support on the stages, and Mads is 24 seconds ahead of Petter going into the final stage. And this has become a crucial stretch of road for Citroen's flying fin, Mikko Hirvonen. Suddenly, he's been handed a lifeline. The two-time Sweden winner can sense there is a chance of a third victory on this incredible event, and he is on a mission out there in stage 23. That puncture must have rattled Yari Matti. But this has been an admirable response from the rally leader. With his lead slashed to just over eight seconds, he has to give it everything. The early split times have looked promising in this stage. And as he bears down on the finish line, I think he could beat Miko this time. Yes, four and a half seconds quicker than his compatriots. A fine effort under intense pressure there. So to the final challenge of this dramatic weekend, the 4.6 kilometer blast around the Hagforce power stage. Bonus points are on offer for the top three finishers, and it's a tricky finale through a twisty undulating ski run. It's been quite a weekend for Pierre Ganner Anderson. The local star has dominated the SWRC category from start to finish to claim his second victory on home soil. Sebastian Loeb has had a miserable weekend by his high standards, so the power stage does represent a last chance for a few bonus points. He'll get three extra if he claims the fastest time and a massive jump as well. Stage cleared and rally done for Loeb. It was some effort and his time will be the benchmark. And there are no power stage heroics from Mikko Hirvonen. The Finn has long since decided to secure second place in the overall standings. So just the rally leader to come now, and what a performance this has been from Yari Matti Latvala. Ford's number one survived that late puncture scare in emphatic style, and while he won't want to risk his sixth career victory for a power stage win, he might still snatch a couple of extra points here. He finishes third in the power stage, but more importantly, that is the second Sweden victory for Latvala. And just look what that means to Yari and co-driver Mika Antila. Celebrations for Ford and Loeb's power stage win means an extra three points for the world champion. Solberg gets two for the second fastest time and a bonus point for the rally winner, Gary Matti Latvala. It was my first time when I won this. It was back in 2008 and I became the youngest ever winner uh, world championship rally. And I, at that time I was beating my idol Henry Toivonen's record. So it's fantastic to win, uh, win a rally again. And it's my first time when I w win the same rally two times. Latvala, the victor by a margin of 16.6 seconds over his former teammate Hirvonen. Osberg claims third place with Petter Solberg having to settle for fourth. And here's how the results translate into points. Latvala getting a total of 26 and Loeb's power stage win brings him some consolation from a disappointing weekend. He takes home a total of 11. But it's Ford and Yari Matti Latvala making the headlines in Sweden.
been great sport. I mean, I think those two guys have been having such a wind up. I think Yari uh, couldn't believe that Miko could be like he was because obviously they've been teammates for so long. But uh, no, it's been uh, it's been good sport, and uh, they've you know we knew that Miko would be the the, the guy to beat here, and uh, it's proved to be the case. But I'm pleased to see that Yari's come out on top. It's been really great, and I, I really enjoyed it, even though you know he beat me this time. But it's been fantastic, really great atmosphere, and uh, and uh, you know he's he's growing up as well, getting older and more consistent. So it's not so easy to wind him up and get him nervous. But uh, there's more rallies to come in, but. You know, it's not too bad. First and second for Finland, so it's, not, it's good. In the Drivers' Championship standing, Sebastian Loeb still leads the way. The Citroen star is now seven points ahead of his teammate Hirvonen, with Petter Solberg the leading forward in third. Latvala's win marks his first points of the year after his Monte Carlo disappointment. In the manufacturer's competition, Citroen Total are up front on 65 points, but Ford are now just 10 behind. Things will heat up considerably for the next round as the WRC is off to Mexico. That's just under a month away. But in Sweden, Yari Mati Latvala and co-driver Mika Antila are celebrating a win that has sparked their season into life. We'll see you in Mexico, but for now, it's goodbye from Sweden.